Is that window? Minimize. All the way to the top. All the way up top. Oh, that one. Yeah. Okay. This yeah. one? No, the other one. Who's the... This yeah. one. Yeah. Your connection is private. Got it. Got okay, got it. So you got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're right. Okay. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Salem's Faith and Diabetes Table Talk. This is week number two. And tonight we're going to talk about weight loss and healthy eating. I am Christy Lindsay, your Table Talk host. And with me, on Zoom is Reverend Liat Richardson Owens and Reverend Natalie Mitchum. At the table, we have Federica Waugh and Sandra Jenkins. Reverend Liat Richardson Owens, myself, Federica, and Sandra Jenkins, we are board members of the Robert Johnson Smith Family Life Center. And we are so very glad and blessed to be able to present this special six weeks Salem Faith and Diabetes pilot about lifestyle changes for prediabetes as well as type 2 diabetes. Last week, we had some very special guests from the City's Change in Diabetes. They talked about why Salem was involved in Cities Changing Diabetes. Salem's Changing Diabetes is, is to focus on providing information about lifestyle changes for prevention of type 2 diabetes, as well as if you are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, managing it healthy so that you will not have some chronic diseases creep up on you. And that's why we're here tonight. And that's why we're going to be here for the next four weeks coming forth to give you some good information about some lifestyle changes. So let's get started on our table talk. Federica, would you mind doing us a great service of introducing Reverend Natalie Mitchum? Sure, sure, it's my pleasure. The Reverend Dr. Natalie Mitchum serves as the Executive Director of the International Health Commission of the AME Church and Registered Dietitian Nutritionist and Health Nutrition Manager for a preschool program. She is the pastor of Quinn Chapel AME Church in New Jersey and is humble and grateful for our Heavenly Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit for the opportunity to share the good news of health, wellness, and lifestyle medicine. As the executive director and health nutrition manager, she provides guidance, education, and training to assist staff and the faith-based community in navigating public health emergencies, such as COVID-19, and equipping and empowering individuals internationally with evidence-based information to help fight and prevent diabetes and other diseases such as cancer, uh, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, premature aging, and more. Reverend Dr. Natalie earned her Bachelor of Science degree with a concentration on foods and nutrition from North Carolina University in Durham, North Carolina, a Master of Divinity degree from the Lutheran Theological Seminary in Pennsylvania, and a Doctor of Education degree with a concentration on leadership in wellness and health from the American College of Education. She has the following certifications in plant-based nutrition as a chef, adult weight management, and a fitness trainer, and she's a member of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Good evening, Reverend Dr. Natalie. Good evening, everybody, and um, I'm so happy to be with you all tonight to share what I like to call again the good news of health, wellness, and lifestyle medicine. I'm very grateful to your team for inviting me to be able to serve in this manner. Um, you know, I'm also a pastor. We do consider that serving and certainly as a registered dietitian also. Um, and certainly um, to the team and also to your pastor. What a wonderful work that I hear that you're doing in that area. So tonight as I begin, I'm going to be sharing with you in just a moment, a PowerPoint. I'll begin to share my screen now. And in my introduction, I just have to make one correction and maybe it's a typo that I made, but 
uh, when they were talking about this, my, the school where I got my bachelor's degree from, I have to give a shout out to um, HBCUs. And so it's actually North Carolina Central University because there might be somebody else who's attended NCCU, the Eagles, and we've got to give a shout out to HBCUs. So just wanted to make sure we do that. But again, so happy to be with each and every one of you. We're gonna be looking at um, how I've titled this is Affordable and Simple Steps to Fight and Prevent Diabetes Type 2 and Achieve a Healthy Weight. Because when we're talking about a healthy weight and nutrition, uh, you know, the focus of the series of workshops that you're gonna be hearing about, we're also focusing on diabetes type two. So I wanted to make sure that this information had a foundation um, based on diabetes type two to help you along your journey. Now, as you heard, I'm also a pastor. So I picked some, a couple of scriptures um, and part of the scripture, one being life more abundantly. We know that God wants to bless us with life more abundantly. Finding that in John 10, 10, um, part B. And then I'm sure you've heard in 1 John, um, dear friend, I pray that you enjoy good health. And the rest of it that says, as, as your soul is getting along well, so I want you to, you know, embrace those scriptures as we move along. And certainly uh, a little bit later, Reverend Owens is going to uh, give us more uh, spiritual inspiration um, just to add to it to uh, help us along our journey. So moving forward, one of the things that we want to make sure that we always are focusing on is evidence-based information. And we know that one of our most reliable, and there are several um, organizations out there who are helping us to fight diabetes and helping us to manage our weight, because the truth of the matter is that our weight and um, how we manage our weight can be directly related to diabetes type two and our health. So the two naturally, uh, you find them working together or walking together or something that we have to address together. So I, that's better if I say it that way, that we have to address together. Because we find that when persons, individuals who are suffering from pre-diabetes, and diabetes type two, if they are able to manage their weight, you can see a change happen that they're, they're able to turn around that situation regarding pre-diabetes and diabetes type two. And so again, looking at organizations that um, are foundational and giving us direction and evidence-based information would be the American Diabetes Association. So I wanted to start there because they let us know that no matter where you are on your type two di type diabetes journey, that you are equipped with information to help you fight it. So it says there that um, type two diabetes, as we all know, means that your body does not use insulin properly. And whether a person, um, whether a person is on medication or not, whether or not you're taking insulin or not, there's a way to manage it. So we understand that for some people, you can control your diabetes type two and your blood sugar levels by healthy eating and exercise. But we also know that many of you, you're on a medication or insulin managing it. But again, regardless of it, we have good news for you that you're able to fight it to protect and prevent it and um, be on a road and a journey for a healthier life. So what are those things that even the American Diabetes Association tells us we need to look at? We need to look at our food and nutrition. We need to look at stress and emotions. We need to look at our physical activity. We need to look at the things that are that can cause us complications and how to prevent those complications. And you know what those are. Certainly neuropathy, where your, your uh, nerves are um, unfortunately dying, neuropathy, and those small little nerves in your fingers and your toes are, are being affected by the all the uh, sugar within your system. And we can control that uh, with um, healthy eating. Our food is medicine and exercise and managing our stress or you know, the effects that it can have on your eyes and have on your kidneys. We wanna prevent all those diabetes complications. And we're gonna share some good news with how you can do that. And in doing that, you also can help you to achieve a healthy weight. And then you wanna make sure you stay on track. So I wanted to make sure I started with presenting some information from the American Diabetes Association so that we can relate it to um, our lifestyle. And I love the fact that our, our team here, they're part of encouraging you how to change um, choices that we make in our life. So there's evidence-based research that indicates that diabetes type two is linked to our lifestyle. And you just heard some of those being mentioned right now, how we manage stress and um, how we are eating. Um, and diabetes type two is preventable. Now I know you all, we're in a virtual presence. And again, 
I'm a pastor. So I want you all to say wherever you're at, you know, don't unmute or anything like that. But wherever you're at, just say diabetes type two is preventable. Okay, Ooh. one more time. Say it with me. Diabetes I type two is preventable. Is preventable. <laughs> no, call and response. And somebody would say, Amen. Throw your head back. Okay. Amen. Amen. That's all right. So here's something else I want you to do. I want you to consider what we eat. And if you have a pencil and a piece of paper, even while you're listening, because when we get to the end, I want you to look at what you ate for breakfast. But I want you to write down for me while you're listening to me. Um, what did you have for breakfast? Please write that down. What did you have for lunch? And what did you have for dinner if you've already had dinner? Or quite possibly, you know, this presentation is taking place during dinner time. What are you eating right now? <laughs> and uh, Or what, what might you eat after this presentation? It's important to look at what we eat. And if you, I have a picture there. If you can see the screen and you see the macaroni cheese, macaroni and cheese, the collard greens there, uh, there's some yams. And then on the side, they've got some fried chicken wings and uh, looks like some ribs. And then they got some sausage and like a typical breakfast and some bacon and eggs. And then um, uh, one of the other pictures shows that instead of us getting a lot of exercise and movement and fitness, unfortunately, we're sitting in front of the television a lot, not getting that exercise. And some of us may be unfortunately you know, abusing um, alcohol, drinking more and smoking or legal drugs, especially in this COVID-19 area. But just to go through the list from the top to the bottom, we need to consider what we eat. It's important. The other thing when it comes to diabetes type two and our weight, lack of daily physical movement or fitness. Some of you might say, you know, I can't go afford to go to a gym. I don't want to go to a gym. But you know, our God has created our bodies with just simple body movement is a blessing you know, getting up and walking, but we'll talk a little bit more of that later. Um, obesity and overweight, being overweight, carrying more weight on your body than you should, it, help, it, it prevents you or puts you in a place be, to be at risk for diabetes type two, or it's also all, or currently hindering you as you're trying to manage your diabetes type two. Um, lack of managing stress, um, unhealthy relationships, lack of sleep or rest, and as I said, substance abuse, including smoking, alcohol, and illegal drugs. So you have to take a look at all those. Where are you at? So when we think about that, I thought about why don't we just say that there are six affordable and simple steps to fight and prevent diabetes type two. And here's the thing, these simple six steps also help you to manage your weight. How about that? And these six simple steps or lifestyle steps or what we call now lifestyle medicine, help you to fight and prevent and address several other types of diseases. But again, tonight we're focusing on diabetes type two. So number one, nutrition and healthy food as medicine. So you wanna make healthy food choices. And we're gonna look at a healthy plate a little bit later. So I won't go into depth with that one just right now. We'll come back to that in a little bit, but fitness and daily activity and a healthy weight. So as I was saying, sometimes you don't want to join a gym. You don't have time to join a gym. You don't want to spend the extra money. But here's the thing. You can get up and take a walk. Um, if you have stairs in your house, you know, use those to safely walk up and down a couple of times. You know how it is. You come downstairs and you have forgotten something that you need. You say, oh, boy, I got to go back upstairs. Well, now no more do I want you to say, oh, boy, say, yay, I got to go back upstairs. <laughs> you have now an opportunity to exercise. If you have to do it slowly, take it slow, one step at a time. If you can move a little bit faster, do that. Uh, but be careful, of course, as you're doing it. Um, so, so take a walk. Grab some cans out of the kitchen, you know, those cans of beans or, or peas or whatever it might be. They can be natural weights for you. Some bottled water can also be a small weight for you to lift up. While you're sitting and you may be um, working at home, you may be on your laptop, or you may be watching a program. Why not march in place? Everybody try that with you. You don't even have to get up, but just ways that you can add some physical activity. While you're right there, why don't you march in place with me? Lifting your legs up, right, left, left, right, left, right. There you go, there you go. Just ways that you can fit in activity. And here's the thing, every time a commercial comes on, if you happen to be watching television, why not again, right, left, left, right, whatever it is, move to the music. A lot of commercials have music. How about this, get up and dance. How about just move around with the music? These are just healthy ways for you to get in 
of that fitness without thinking about it. And certainly you can do some organized fitness. You can get um, a videotape or a DVD. I just dated myself, not too many videotapes, a DVD so that you can uh, watch that. And again, or exercise with a friend, walk with a friend, find different ways that you can get that in. Why is that also important? Again, to help prevent diabetes type two, but to help you to manage your weight. Because when we are moving our body, we are using our muscles, it's burning calories. Um, it's allowing our, our body to lose that extra body weight as we are burning fat and, um, and using those calories that we consume from what we ate. So let's do that. Number three, stress management. A stress happens to all of us. There's good stress and there's things that we consider bad stress. What would be good stress? So good stress could be planning a wedding, but there's a lot that goes on with that. Does someone like the dress? Does someone wants to be the venue here? Or, you know, a, a mother-in-law that wants to plan it this way, a future mother-in-law wants to plan it this way, or current father wants to plan it this way, whatever it is. It's, it's a wonderful event, but it can be stressful. But we have to find ways to manage that. How can we help and work with one another in time management? And then there's other stress, stressors that happen on, on the job or, or maybe the illness in your body, maybe even diabetes type two feels like it's stressful, but here's the thing, here's the good news. Everybody say good news. Good you can news. manage it, you can fight and prevent it. It's how you think about it. You know, the Bible talks about renewing the spirit of your mind, but we can manage that stress. So you wanna make sure that you do that. We never really thought about how stress affects our health, but it really does. Healthy relationships, taking a look at the relationships we're in. Again, sometimes we can't always choose. I've heard my mother say that the family we're born in, but you can choose how you interact with people. You can choose your response to situations. So again, take a look at yourself, your self-care, the relationships you're in. If something's abusive, you got to find a way to get out of that abusive situation. Make sure you are seeking out healthy relationships. Restorative sleep. It's recommended that we at least get seven to eight hours of sleep. Now that might sound like a lot to some of you. You stay up all night long. You know, you're waiting to be an adult. You're watching television all night long, but look, you need to get plenty of sleep. Sleep is time when our body is healing and repairing itself. And even with diabetes type two, you want time for your body to be healing and repairing itself. And when it comes to weight loss, they have found that the less sleep that we get, or the short, or less hours, less amount of hours that we get at night that doesn't allow us to get that good REM deep sleep, that also relates to us not uh, having a healthy body weight. They even say this about some persons who work at night. Um, you need to have a real good sleep schedule because if your sleep schedule gets off, again, that can cause you to carry more body weight, gain more, gain more weight, and suffer um, more from certain diseases, including diabetes type two. So you want to get that restorative sleep. So if you work at night, you need to find a good time during the day where you can get that good restorative, restorative healing sleep that we all need. And if you sleep at night, let's not watch television all night long. Let's not stay up all night while watching movies. Let's turn off the lights. Get some, get some rest that we need because we know this time for our body to heal. And also it helps to promote you're finding that healthy body weight. Then it goes without saying, number six, avoiding substance. Smoking uh, is a hindrance uh, to your diabetes type two and your overall health. It's a hindrance to your body being able to, to have that good um, oxygen exchange because it's a hindrance to your lungs. And you want your lungs to function properly as you are getting that fitness in and everything is connected in our body. So we want to promote you know, healthy lungs. Of course, alcohol, alcohol also, um, has um, is high in calories, so and people don't think about that. But it, but the calories in in the alcohol um, can cause you to gain a lot of weight. And of course, the calories uh, which um, is in the alcohol also can help. Will also hinder your diabetes type two because you're taking in too many calories. The energy that's in it. So you, you don't want to over um, you don't want to overuse that. For those of you who drink, many times in the Christian community, some people avoid doing it. But if you happen to drink, I just have to say it because people do drink. You want to be very careful about the amount you're taking in. And it's important to mention that now, especially um, during COVID nineteen, because they've seen that a lot of people have turned to these substance in order to make it through, but we want to turn to the Lord. Amen. Um, and we want to find other things uh, that we can do without abusing substance. And of course, illegal drugs, you just need to stay away from it. Why? Because it's illegal that we need to make it plain. Okay. Um, here's the thing. 
one of the things I didn't put a part of the seven, but it is a part of the six here, but it's important is if your doctor prescribed medication, of course, take your meds, take your medication until your doctor says you don't need the medication or reduces your medication. And I have found as an RD, I've worked with people and it's possible with diabetes type two, putting these things in place, you can actually come off of your medication and or have your doctor uh, reduce your medication. I've seen it happen. It can all happen. But again, you want to do it with your doctor's permission. So please don't listen to this presentation and go and say, oh, that's it. I'm not taking my medication anymore. That's the wrong thing to do. I don't want you to have any type of medical emergency. What you want to do is put these things in place. And then you want your doctor to say to you, what are you doing? I see that your glucose levels and your A1C, all those things are improving. What are you doing? Then you begin to tell your doctor of the changes that you have made. So please do keep that in mind that lifestyle medicine is very, very effective in helping you to um, manage and prevent diabetes type 2, uh, fight diabetes type 2, and um, help you to find a healthy weight. Here's some more good news. And this comes from the Harvard School of Public Health. And it says, I'm just going to read what it says. The good news is type two diabetes is largely preventable. Again, everybody say it with me, preventable. preventable. Because I want you to hear it. And so about nine cases out of 10 could be avoided by simply, by, by taking several simple steps, keeping our weight under control, exercising more, eating a healthy diet and not smoking. A more, little bit more research I want to present it. Now, this comes from the American Cancer Society, but I still felt it was important to present it to you. So they're talking about fighting, of course, cancers, breast, colon, and prostate cancer, but also diabetes. So listen to this, just reading it, because some of you are saying, well, my mom had diabetes type 2, my dad had it, my grandma had it, just runs through my family. But just because it's running through your family, you can put the stop sign and tell diabetes, no more running through our family. That's enough. You had enough in the name of Jesus, right? That's enough, no more running through our family. So although your genes influence our risk of cancer, most of the difference in cancer risk between people is due to the factors that are not inherited. Avoiding tobacco products, staying at a healthy weight, staying active through life and eating a healthy diet may greatly reduce a person's lifetime, listen to that, lifetime risk of developing or dying from cancer and these same behaviors are also linked with the lowering a, your risk of developing heart disease and diabetes. How about that? Sounds like good news to me. How about for you? So we can do something about this. So I told you we would talk about nutrition. So that's why I didn't go in depth earlier. So here's a healthy plate in front of you. This healthy plate comes from the Harvard University or the Harvard School of Public Health. I really like this plate. And I just want to go around this plate so that we can see um, how it matches up. So you wrote down earlier what you had for breakfast, what you had for lunch, and what you had for dinner or you're planning to have for dinner. Now, I want you to look at that list. And I want, as I'm going over this plate, I want you to see how well you have made a healthy plate even today, how close you were, and what goals you want to set for yourself. Because here's the thing also as a registered dietitian, we're not here, I'm not here to beat up on you. I want to encourage you. I want to equip you. I want to empower you to make better lifestyle choices, okay? So when you look at a healthy plate, here's what you want to consider. First of all, the star of this plate is not meat. I want everybody to take a look. The star of this plate is not meat, it's vegetables. This is a plant-powered plate, okay? That's a lot of words, a plant-powered plate. So most of this plate, this healthy plate is plant-based, mostly fruits and vegetables and whole grains. And so the largest part of this plate in, in green are vegetables. And so it tells us that we need to eat more vegetables, a greater variety. But here's the thing, potato chips and French fries don't count everybody. I'm sorry, they don't count. Unfortunately in America, we are the French fry uh, uh, country. And unfortunately a lot of children, French fries is all they eat. But once you deep fry that potato, it's lost its nutri nutrient value. You want to eat a lot of colorful fruits and vegetables, both uh, fresh and, and cooked and, you know, go with uh, fresh first and uh, frozen next and canned, low sodium um, um, on your plate. And of course, salads. 
The next thing you want to eat, a, you can eat a fruit with your meal. Sometimes we eat it separate, but you can certainly have it with your meals. And when I think of someone, we're talking about diabetes type two, it's good to eat everything on the plate together so that while it's going into your body, you've got that fiber there to help to manage the, your sugar levels or your blood glucose level. You've got the fiber coming from the skin on the fruits and the skin and the vegetables and the whole grains to help balance it out as opposed to you just eating you know, a piece of fruit later by itself. You can have it with your meal. You wanna balance that out. The next thing I wanna look at on this plate are whole grains, encouraging us to eat a variety of whole grains. Uh, we want to encourage you to eat a variety of whole grains, uh, like whole wheat bread, whole grain pasta, brown rice, and to, to limit refined grains and like white rice and white bread. And I know some of you, you've grown up on white rice and white bread, but now it's try, time to try those other colors because Brown is beautiful, everybody. Brown is beautiful. You can say black is beautiful. Um, but there's so, but here's the thing. It's because of the nutrients and the fiber. And with diabetes type 2 and managing your weight, you want to get that fiber in. You want to get that fiber in, as I just said, to help manage your blood glucose, your blood sugars. You want to get that fiber in to push um, toxins and things and that get stuck in our digestive tract. You want to keep it moving to reduce constipation. So you want to make sure you do that. So try those whole grains that you've been avoiding. I know you have, you've been walking past, the, past that brown rice. You've been saying ill to the whole grain waffles and pancakes, but let's try them because it will help you manage your diabetes type two and promote a healthy weight. The next thing I wanna look at is the healthy protein. Here it says that healthy protein includes fish, poultry, beans, and nuts, but we need to limit red meat, cheese. We need to avoid bacon cold cuts and other processed foods. Why? The bacon, the cold cuts and the processed meats, um, they're, they're can be high in nitrates and uh, other chemicals to, to, to keep them lasting long in the way that they make them, high in sodium without, without a doubt. And all of that can be a hindrance, of course, to your diabetes type two, because many times you might find somebody with diabetes type two may also have um, high blood pressure and, you know, high blood pressure directly related to sodium. So you want to be mindful of that. So again, I want to repeat again, the star of this plate is not meat. The star of this plate is vegetables, whole grains and fruit. So that's how you rearrange. So you're looking at your, what you have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You don't have to tell me, how are you doing? Another thing that's on this plate, healthy oils. So it's saying healthy oils like olive oil and canola oil, these are the things you can use in your cooking and your salad and on the table. You want to limit butter so you can avoid those trans fats. So what are we going to drink? How about a glass of water? How about a glass of water? Water is a wonderful beverage for us, zero calories. Um, so, and you can put it in tea and you can, you know, have tea and coffee, of course, but you know, you want little sugar or no sugar. It talks about limiting milk and dairy to one to two servings per day. And if you're going to have juice, maybe a small glass of juice. But I would say this, have the fruit as opposed to the juice. Why? Because the fruit has the fiber in it. The fruit also has phytonutrients, plant nutrients designed to, to fight disease, to prevent disease that God placed in it, that when we, they process juice, it loses all those disease fighting principles. And I want to add this too, a little thing that I put on, instead of focusing on calories, focus on creating a healthy, colorful meals with plant powered foods as the main dish that are naturally placed in there, like I said, by our heavenly father to help us fight diabetes type two, obesity and other diseases. Um, in other words, when you are looking at fruits and vegetables, when you're looking at broccoli and strawberries and cherries and collard greens and kale, you are looking at nutrients. The very color represents nutrients that are in there, phytonutrients, plant nutrients in there to help us fight disease and also manage our weight. The next thing that I want to make a connection with, um, and I'm almost at my last um, uh, slide here, is that the ADA, the American Diabetes Association, also agrees that we need to focus on healthy plant powered meals. And th so they've developed the diabetes plate. So I just showed you Harvard's healthy plate. And I think some of you know about choose my plate, but here's diabetes plate. And so what they're telling us to do again, just look at the plate. And I love what it says. If you're looking for an easy place to start, then try following diabetes plate method. This is a simple guide that offers stress-free way to plan your portions without counting, 
calculating or measuring? Because I know some of you, how many cups of this? How many calories of this? Is it 1,200? Is it 300? Is it 800? And yes, we should pay attention to calories, but we're, we are moving to a place now where it, when you make that plate more of a plant-powered plate, smaller portions of meat, sometimes some meatless meals, when you do that, you already naturally reduce the calories and you actually have a little, more, a little bit more food on your plate because you can actually eat more of plant-based foods um, because they have more nutrients in them. They're, they have less calories, whereas a piece of meat is going to be uh, have more calories and the larger the piece of meat, the, the more calories that you have. But when you change that around, you don't have to focus on the calories. You don't have to focus so much on the serving sizes, but you don't want to overdo it. So don't misunderstand me. You still want to make sure that that meat portion, no bigger than the size of your palm, not by anybody else's palm. So join me again. Look at your palm. And if somebody else is in there with you, uh, look at their palm. Their palm is not the same size as your palm. So you want to make sure that any meat portions are not bigger than that. That helps you to manage that. And you actually can take the palm of your hand and go around your plate. And you want to make sure that other portion sizes, unless it's like a fresh salad or something like that, is not too much bigger than that. And someone says, well, what if I get hungry? Eat more fresh fruits and vegetables. Eat more vegetables. Eat more of the whole grains. Don't go back for another piece of the meat. That will help you in managing your diabetes, fighting diabetes type 2, and also will assist you when you are, are trying to lose weight. So I wanted to show you that. So here is my last slide. So how about this? Looking at your plate and looking at what you had for breakfast, we're just going to look at breakfast for time's sake. So my question to you is, did you start your day with a meal to fight and prevent diabetes type 2 and obesity uh, with an unhealthy, traditional, sad American diet, American mm -hmm. breakfast, or a healthy one. So you're saying, well, what is a standard American diet, standard American breakfast, or we also call it a standard American diet or the sad diet? That's a diet that we're typically used to eating. And this diet, unfortunately, promotes heart disease, diabetes type 2, high blood pressure, arthritis, cancer, premature aging, constipation, obesity, and more. What does it look like having that bacon, having the donuts? I was getting ready to say a particular company, but somebody might work for them. I don't want anybody to be calling me. You have to take this off the air. Okay, oh, the donuts, okay. Uh, the pancakes and the sausage, uh, a bagel and cream cheese, fruity tutti cereals, and you know those breakfast sandwiches. Again, not mentioning any names, okay. We got used to eating those, but those uh, you uh, most times, of course, high in calories, high in saturated fat, high in sodium, no nutritive value. That tutti frutti cereal may be colorful, but it can't beat a natural blueberry, a natural strawberry. The colors, the artificial colors they put in that tutti frutti cereal, uh, again, does not match the natural colors that God placed in the blueberry, the strawberry, the cherry, the oranges, the apple, and the phytonutrients that come with that. And so what's a plant-powered breakfast that you could have had that would have helped you to fight, prevent, stop, reverse, regenerate, heal, and repair, and help you with your body weight? How about some avocado toast? Somebody said, oh, I can't try. Some of you try it. You won't, you won't know until you try it. You remember the commercial, and I'm gonna date myself again. Remember Mikey and, and that cereal that he ate? Try it, Mikey. Try it, Nicole. I don't know what your name is, whatever it might be. Taste it. You know, make it the way it makes for you. How about hummus? Has anybody tried hummus? Anybody out there? Hummus is good. And maybe you don't like one brand of hummus, but you, hummus is not just for a little snack. It could be for breakfast, it could be a, a meat substitute. Yes, it might not be how you've been used to eating, but it's another way to get in a variety. And if you don't like the way it tastes in stores, make your own. How about oatmeal? Some of us grew up on oatmeal. Let's get back to eating that oatmeal, putting in um, our own fresh berries in there. Again, you got the fiber that's in the oatmeal, the fiber that's in maybe in the blueberries and the strawberries. Again, I've already repeated again, that fiber is necessary to help manage that blood sugar. That fiber is also helps us with managing um, our weight. Because again, the more fiber that we have in our diet, it also helps to push out and help us manage those levels of fats that are within the diets, within the meal that we've just taken. So it's just good to make sure you get fiber in. How about some rice and beans or, or a healthy smoothie? That's something that I have for breakfast every morning, a healthy smoothie. You know what else a smoothie does? A smoothie allows you to get in those vegetables. So you can just take, maybe take some soy milk. You have a blender, doesn't have to be an expensive blender. Put that in there. 
throw in, you have spring salad mix, throw some of that in. Do you have a banana laying around, an orange laying around? You got some kale, some collards, throw it all in there, blend it all up. You have a wonderful smoothie. I know some of you are saying, oh boy, try it. Don't knock it until you try it. And then how about trying some of the non-dairy milks that are out there? Many of you, you are lactose intolerant. I want to tell you, you are lactose intolerant. That's why you're bloating. That's why you got the gas. That's why you're constipated. That's why you don't feel well. And you keep eating or drinking and using the cow's milk. Come away from it. Try coming away from it. Try these non-dairy milks. I recommend a soy milk for many different reasons. Women, it has uh, the phytoestrogens in it. They can help us with balancing all these hormones that you're going through later. Men, I know they've told us in America, you guys shouldn't have it, but there's, there's research showing um, the benefits of soy milk for both males and females, and it doesn't feminize you. Um, and the new research is out about that. So try the soy milk. And as a matter of fact, and this, I remember in my in the bio, it mentioned I work in a school. Well, in the school, we serve cow's milk and soy milk. And soy milk now, according to USDA, the Child Care Adult Food Program, is an equivalent to the cow's milk. So try it. Now, there are other ones out there, of course, the almond milk and things like that. So whichever one works for you, give it a try and see how that works to help you to manage um, your diabetes, uh, to prevent it, to fight it, and also help to help you to see how you can lo lose some weight. I have um, a person that I was working with. And again, as I said, many people are um, uh, lactose intolerant. And when this individual stopped drinking cow's milk, because every morning they had a stomach ache and they were going through all these different issues. When they stopped drinking cow's milk, they lost weight. They're actually, their body uh, shape just completely changed. They were able to achieve that healthy weight. Uh, skin got better. They felt better. So, you know, just a simple change like that just might make a difference in your life. So I encourage you uh, to consider that. So that's my PowerPoint um, a presentation. And uh, I know we're going to take some questions. And of course, Reverend Owens is going to do a presentation. So again, thank you for the opportunity for sharing this good news with everybody. Amen. Very, Amen. very good. Very, very good. I, uh, Reverend Natalie Mitchum, I have to say, after our brief uh, connection last week to go over tonight, and you saw, and you and you shared that you changed your whole lifestyle eating to plant based. Absolutely. I made the same decision mm -hmm. <laughs> this past Monday, and this it's just been phenomenal. Um, this morning, I had a smoothie. I love smoothies, um, but I made my first plant-based home, you know, from scratch, plant burger. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I got some menus, some recipes, and I like the lifestyle that I'm, I'm doing for me you know, to keep me healthy, to make sure that I age healthy, because that's my desire. I want my body to age healthy so God can continue to use me for his kingdom advancement. So I, I, I value your uh, about uh, plant-based uh, eating and, and, and choosing the, the right foods. Um, any other comments you want to talk about, about, you know, what she presented? Yes, uh, Dr. Mitchum. Now that you have defined the importance of preventing type 2 diabetes by six ways of taking control of your, of your overall health, is there a set schedule to get in good nutrition per day? There's not really a set schedule. Um, uh, we, we, of course, we know traditionally we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, okay? But, and, and here's what we want to do. We want to make sure that whatever we're eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, again, using that plate, make sure it's plant powered. And here's the thing, um, as was shared earlier um, by my dear sister, Christy, you know, we've made a choice to go plant-based. Everybody can't make that choice to go fully plant-based. And I understand that. As a registered dietitian, I talk to all types of clients, but here's what I would say with that plate that you just saw, and even the diabetes plate method, make sure that most of your plate, that would be the prescription for nutrition, most of your plate has foods that grow from the ground and a smaller amount of food that comes from animal product. That would make it successful, whether it's breakfast, whether it's lunch or dinner, and sometimes have some meatless meals. So every meal does not have to have meat with it. I know we've been taught that. We've been taught we always have to have meat with a meal and we have to have a, a, a cup of cow's milk. Well, that's not true. Um, there is protein in whole grains. 
there's protein in your green, um, your kale and uh, collard greens. And many of us, we've been eating collard greens uh, for years. The problem is we've been eating our collard greens swimming in pork fat. Mm -hmm. so, we need to get rid of the pork fat. But you know, you get protein from that and even calcium from that. But to answer your question, no, there's not, a, other than just, again, making it more of a plant powered plate, which we saw, less meat, some meatless meals, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you'll find that you can be more successful and you can get that fiber in. We as Americans, we uh, traditionally eat low fiber diets, which led to our pre-diabetes, our diabetes type two, um, our extra weight on our body. You get that fiber in and you just watch uh, how your body responds. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Reverend Liat, you have a question or a uh, conversation? Well, you were talking about fiber. I had started adding psyllium to my diet for fiber to help because it seems like I don't drink enough. I have a autoimmune issue that makes me extremely dry. So I need to have extra fiber and I added that to my, my, um, my diet. Is that okay on ongoing or should it be limited? Well, when we um, use things that are supplements like that, I never want to say that they're not okay because everybody's body is different. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you know you feel your body is responding well, um, then then we'll say it's it's okay to do. It, it is better if you could with the foods that you were eating to get the fiber within the foods, but it all depends on how we're eating. So mm -hmm. those supplementation, if that's what's helping you because of what's available for you to eat based on your work schedule or your lifestyle or just, or, or you're making a progression towards eating more fiber, then that's a great place to start. Um, Cause we always want to give uh, persons a starting point. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you do want to pay attention to this though. When we do supplement with things uh, such as the psyllium or other things, we want to pay attention to our dependence, our body's dependency on it, mm -hmm. because um, that, that, could be a uh, could be a bad thing. I should say it that way because if you're if you can all if you you become constipated when you're not having that, then now you're dependent on that, mm -hmm. and that might not be a good way that you wanted to go. So I would encourage you too to take a look at how how many whole grains you're getting in. Um, mm -hmm. Are you eating fruit with the skin on? Of course, clean it up very very well because we can eat the apple skin. We're not going to eat a banana skin, but I've seen people eat banana skins. Um, they make different things with it. So I'm not saying you can't, but see how you can get it in within the food so that maybe that supplementation is, is the smallest amount that you need. But again, I don't want to say it's totally bad or because everybody's body is different and your body may need that. It may need that to respond and it doesn't have to be totally bad, but again, everybody's body is different. So thank you. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Mitchell, when you're talking about sugar, you know, we all like a little bit of sugar. Some of us like a lot of sugar, but um, how can you manage it? And, and when we're talking about sugar, I know it's best to get it from our, our fruits and things like that. I understand that. But, um, you know, everyone doesn't quite, everyone's not going to be able to do that. Well, we can all do that. I shouldn't say that. We can all do that. But we're going to use, like, I prefer to use honey because my body seems to digest it better than, um, you know, granulated sugar. But, um, and I don't overdo it. You know, there are days that I just want something sweet. I may put a little honey in, in my tea or something. But I realize that honey is still sugar. You know, so that's the thing. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? So I think the last statement that you, that you just made is we have to realize that honey is still sugar. Um, some of the other choices that we might choose um, uh, uh, for, for using in place of sugar, sometimes uh, people might do the monk fruit, um, sometimes they might do agave, you know, all those different things, but sugar is sugar, especially when it gets into your body. So we want to keep that in mind. Certainly, uh, some of the, some of the uh, other substitutes that they're natural because of the uh, fiber, the little bit of fiber that's in them can certainly help you again in managing that blood glucose levels. So one of the things that we can do, you mentioned white sugar, refined sugar, do our best to come away from it. Uh, practice. So if you have coffee or tea in the morning, and I don't know, you're putting six teaspoons in, begin to wean yourself off of it. Because here's the thing, we have worked ourselves to a threshold of a sugary taste. 
But here's the blessing about your tongue and your taste buds. You can also wean it off of wanting sweet foods. So begin slowly once you have a made up mind, okay? Have a renewing of your mind about this and say, hey, okay, tomorrow I'm going down to one, uh, five teaspoons. And then we'll, we'll go with that for a little bit. Then, you know, you'll, maybe in a couple of days, now I'm going down to four. And just keep moving it down. So hopefully you can get down to maybe one teaspoon and hopefully not the white refined sugar. Try a different mm -hmm. substitute. Again, maybe it's the agave. Maybe it's a coconut sugar, which has fiber in it. Maybe it's the monk fruit. And there's uh, so many different ones coming out. I certainly can't name all of them, but you get down to maybe just one teaspoon of it in whatever you're looking at. And you'll notice that as you begin to wean yourself off of it, what, what tasted so good that coffee with six teaspoons now is too sweet for you. Uh, the donut is too sweet for you. The cookie is too sweet for you. I know some of you are saying that'll never happen to me. It can happen, <laughs> but you've got to have a made up mind to allow it. And, and also do this for yourself. Begin to get back to buy an apple and just eat the apple. And when you eat the apple, just take the savoring of the sweetness of the apple so that you can begin to train your um, taste buds to enjoy natural sweetness. What we, um, there are food scientists that make many of these products and they have looked at food and for lack of better words, they heighten the sweetness of it or they've heightened the sodium of it. So we have now a higher threshold and we're used to this artificial sweetened type. And I'm not just talking about artificial sugar, but this artificial desire for this sweet, sweet, sweet food. Okay. But again, take an apple and just eat a, a, a fresh apple and enjoy the natural sweetness of that. Take a strawberry and enjoy the natural, take a blueberry and start doing that. And then you'll notice that you say, hmm, you know, these, I'm getting my threshold, my taste buds are changing. So I get, I get used to things that are less sweet and you, you can begin to see a change, but it, it will happen over time. It, you know, it's going to take step by step and, and a made up mind to do so. Mm -hmm. I love sugar. I'm a sugar junkie and, um, you know, my cakes and sweets and, and trying to wane off of the sugar. I like the, the sweet cream in my coffee and I'm trying to wane off of it. And, and when I drink more of the sweet cream in my coffee, I'm getting a headache that that sugar headache, mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, I, I guess my body is, is changing. I want to ask a question about water. How, you know, how much intake of water should we have uh, to help with weight loss, to flush out our system and, and things like that? Talk to us a little bit about water intake. So when you were also looking at the picture that I showed you from Harvard University and um, you saw there was a glass of water there. So really what we recommend is that you drink water with your with your meals instead of that soda and even instead of diet soda. I have to say it this way. If diet soda was the answer, we still wouldn't have this pre-diabetes diabetes type two. The diet products aren't the answer. It's changing how we eat. It's making those better choices. Some of you are saying, oh, my diet soda, it's really would really be better if you had a glass of water. I don't like water. Okay, let's put some fruit in it. Let's put some water in it. How about some salsa water without, uh, without sugar and sweetener in it? But my point is, first of all, start with drinking, your, drinking water with your meals. So with breakfast, uh, with lunch, with, with your snacks, that'll allow you to get it in. Um, the other thing is to have water available to you. Like I have a glad, uh, bottle of water here, sip on water throughout the day, you know, um, and that's a good way because sometimes we want to gulp down water and now you feel bloated. How about sip on it through the day? That will allow you to get hydrated. And as you said, water flushes out water, even in cases where you are retaining water. They tell you to sip on some water because water can flush out water of the body. And then the other thing that we recommend is you drink half of your body weight in ounces of water. And again, now we're counting. So that's why we start with drink it, drink it with your, with your meals, sip on it. But now if you want to count, so if you weigh hundred pounds, it's just an easy number to pick. If you weigh hundred pounds, you want to, you want to consume 50 ounces, not cups, everybody, everybody say ounces with me, ounces, <laughs> not cups, 50 ounces of water per day. If you weighed hundred pounds, so whatever you weigh, write that down on the piece of paper, Divide it in two, and that's how many ounces you would look to want to consume to get uh, properly hydrated throughout the day. So that would mean that you'd want to have that 
with your meals. You would want to drink that between, between meals so that you're not competing with the sodas and the fruity tooty beverages. Try your best to come away from all those, of course, step by step and get in the water. And that's the best way to do it. So again, with your meals, sipping on it through the day, half your body weight in ounces of water would be the best way to do that. And you know, uh, if you, we have to also keep this in mind because again, if you have diabetes type two, sometimes you might have high blood pressure. You might be on a water restriction. And so be very careful, follow your doctor's instructions. If you can only drink so much water, you have, you're on um, dialysis um, because unfortunately diabetes type two has um, hindered your, your kidneys and they're not functioning anymore. You don't want to drink any more. Uh, you don't want to over drink fluids. You want to follow your doctor's instructions, your kidney doctor's instructions, your dialysis, your renal dietitian's instructions. Only drink the amount of water that they've recommended for you because as good as water is, if you don't follow the proper directions, you can, you can create a problem for yourself. But in general, for everybody else, drink it with your meals, between meals. Drink it cold, drink it warm. You know, we're all a little different. Uh, herbal teas, you can take um, some tea and take an herbal tea bag, drop it in there. And you know, we have so many herbal flavors. Your water can taste different all the time and without adding sugar to it. So. That's great. That is very creative. Mm -hmm. I did not think Good about, uh, about you know, taking the tea bags and putting them in and, and having different flavors to it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I add a lemon. Uh, there you go you know, to the container and and, and things like that um, to help. Is there is there any other questions or or mm -hmm. comments that we want to? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so we only have a few minutes. Um, Lee, Reverend Liot, would you like to share uh, oh, the okay. faith? Yes. Thank you, Christy. So last week, welcome back if you were here last week, and welcome if it's your first session. Last week, we spoke about the, uh, at the scripture, the gospel of John, the fifth chapter, verses one through eight. Do you want to get well? So we know that wellness is a choice. And it, what we decided last week, we wanted to also continue this week. And so, so basically, what does it mean to be well? So each day we make choices that impact us. What time we go to bed? Will we get up early and pray? Will we meditate on scripture or stay in bed? What to eat, what to drink? Should I learn more about prediabetes? Should I walk up the stairs or take the elevator? We make choices every day. And wellness incorporates all of our choices, positive or negative. And the author Swalbrick states that wellness is a conscious, deliberate process that requires being aware of and making choices for a more satisfying lifestyle. Wellness includes a self-defined balance of health habits. So making changes to unhealthy habits is not easy, but through small steps and through God's grace, we can do it. Now let's look how Paul handles this weakness of sometimes it's hard to make the good choices. And sometimes we have to know that God is with us throughout all the choices that we make. So Paul proclaimed to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9 through 10, he, he asked God for help to help him get uh, over this weakness that he had. And he was tormented, tormented by a thorn in his flesh. And it's not clear in the scripture what that thorn was. And it wasn't a literal thorn, but a weakness that he had to live with. And he pleaded to God to remove it three times to take this weakness away. And God responded that my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So Paul boasted more about his weakness so that the power of Christ would be with him. And so God is able to deliver us from our weaknesses, from our sugar uh, uh, weakness that we desire, and that we, but and incrementally we ask God for strength and he will give us the strength to get through it. Are we eating because of stress instead of hunger? Are we eating too much sugar? Are we eating too much, putting too much food on our plate? We, we, uh, Dr. Mitchum showed us what we used to eat. The soul food plate is too good, and but we have to look at what we're eating and make a real good change and make some lifestyle changes to our diet to make it less salty and less fatty. Are we eating too many salty snacks like pretzels and, 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 and potato chips? Are we eating a lot of fried fruits? A lot of people like a fried fish on a Friday, but we have to reevaluate. Perhaps we can put that, uh, uh, we can grill that flounder instead of frying it. 
Are we binge watching TV instead of moving our body? Through all these changes that we have to ask God to strength to get through the struggle with food. And it's a struggle. It's not easy to make these changes, but step by step with God's help and God's grace, we can get through it. Slow down. Take a deep breath when you're eating. Pray and enter into the presence of God when you're feeling weak, when, you, when you're tempted to get those four donuts. Keep walking fast past that past that donut shop and say, Lord Jesus, give me, the, give me the strength to get past that store. We can't make change without submitting our body, mind, and spirit to God's will. As we spoke last week, but body, mind, and spirit needs to be in alignment. And with our food, it's important. It impacts our body, but it also impacts our mind and definitely impacts our spirit. But we know that the Holy Spirit will teach us and strengthen us and comfort us as our heart draws nearer and closer to God as we ask God for strength to help us with our weakness. So reflect on this scripture throughout the week, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 10. All right, so let us have a word of prayer as we close out for this wonderful uh, session we had with Dr. Mitchum. I was so blessed by all the information I've learned today. I'm sure you are too. Let us look to the Lord. Eternal Father in heaven, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together to learn and be educated about great nutrition and moving our bodies. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the blessing of Dr. Mitchum. We pray, oh God, that you continue to guide and direct her and continue to strengthen her in her ministry and her church, oh God. We thank you for all of the presenters today and all of the board members who presented. We pray, oh God, for their families and we continue to watch over them. And we pray, oh God, for all those who have come today to uh, be a part of this workshop and all those who are viewing, bless them in a mighty way and comfort them and give them strength each and every day. And Lord, give them strength. And when they're strong, when they're weak, give them strength, oh God, that they can move past all the weaknesses that they're going through with their food choices. We ask these blessings in the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 And we are slowly running out of time. Thank you again. Reverend Mitchell, <laughs> Mitchell mm -hmm. Natalie Mitchum. Mm -hmm. I am so thankful. I'm so glad God connected us. Amen. God bless you. Um, God you bless are you. an amazing uh, helper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we need helpers. And, and I'm so grateful to God that, that he had uh, joined us together to, to help one another. And you have helped helped our team um, significantly, as well as helped my, my church family to, to gain more understanding about making some healthy lifestyle and, and eating and, and all. Uh, Reverend Liat Richardson mm -hmm. Owens, thank you again for your word of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Next week, we have another special guest speaker. Uh, she was also a part of the Cities Changing Diabetes team. Serena Valentine, and she will come and speak to us about peer support. Uh, she's from the Cities Changing Diabetes in Houston. Uh, she's an executive director of CORE Initiative, a nonprofit that she has created. And she's going to come and talk about peer support, the importance of peer support. She's going to come and talk about um, diabetes. She's going to give a little more information about diabetes. And she has mastered many lessons. And she's going to demonstrate uh, a mini lesson that's just powerful. Please join us again next week. Same time, same place. If you have any questions that you want us to present to our speakers at any time or answer, please send an email to Diabetes Education at SalemBaptistChurch.org. The email is in the YouTube. Uh, so please send us a, an, an, an email with, with your questions. And also the City's Change in Diabetes is, uh, is going to provide a survey on, on this program, this pilot. And we want you all to participate in this survey. This survey will help um, the city's changing diabetes to help Salem to move forward and developing more um, lifestyle change 
pro preventive programs um, as you know as next year comes on and things like that. So uh, we're going to uh, make this link available for you to take this survey next week. So please take the surveys, just 10 short questions, but your participation in that survey will be very helpful um, with this program as we move forward with cities changing diabetes and as they help support this initiative. May God bless you. Have a wonderful evening and a wonderful week. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh,